Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Around the World in 80 Plates. Today we're going to be making a tea cake that is influenced by a part of the world that we have not visited yet, Pakistan. This recipe is special to me for a couple of reasons. The first thing is that Pakistan is where my mom and her two older brothers spent six very happy years there as children when my grandfather was working on a huge engineering project called the Mangla Dam. That place in that time will always hold a very special place in their hearts. And the second reason is that this cake beautifully combines the influence of regional spices on what is otherwise a very traditionally British recipe. And my friends know that I am truly an Anglophile at heart. Now, Pakistan, much like India and Sri Lanka, was heavily colonized by England during the days of the empire. And many recipes in all of these countries tend to reflect the influence that they have had on each other. In fact, in England today, the curry in all its forms is the most popular dish for takeaway meals. Now, a word about cardamom. Cardamom is native to Southern India, but it is super popular in Finnish and Swedish cooking and baking. It has a very unique and distinctive flavor profile. It's, um, it's very fragrant and it smells both minty and citrusy at the same time. It's going to lend a very distinctive but delicious flavor to our cake. First, our dry ingredients. We're going to sift together two cups of gluten-free flour, three quarter cup sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of cardamom, and half a teaspoon of salt. Once it's mixed up, go ahead and put that aside. Now, in the bowl of our standing mixer, we're going to mix together one cup of full fat sour cream, three eggs, two tablespoons of vanilla, and eight tablespoons of melted butter. Go ahead and start by combining your melted butter, sour cream, and vanilla first, then adding your eggs. You wanna make sure this mixture is silky smooth. Now we're going to add our dry ingredients in two parts to our wet ingredients. Make sure before you add the second portion that you mix everything up completely. You want this mixture as silky smooth as possible before you put it in the loaf pan, like so. And once it's in the pan, make sure you smooth it out and get any air pockets or lumps out of your batter before you put it in the oven. We're going to bake this at 355 for 55 to 60 minutes. Once your cake is golden brown and clean in the middle, Go ahead and put out a cooling rack and let your cake cool for at least an hour. And let's dig in. Let's see how this tastes. Mmm. It's very moist. I think because of the sour cream, it definitely adds a lot of moisture to this cake. It's dense, but not too dense. It's sweet and spicy, but not overly so. It's not gonna overpower the taste of the cake itself. And it pairs beautifully with a milky chai. I definitely enjoyed making this recipe today, and I hope you did too. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.